Hi, this video is about how to do random access files. So that means if we want, if we have uh, want to load and save objects that we need to change stuff in the middle of them. For example, if we have a list of persons like I've used in my previous videos, then what if we want to add a person in the middle of the file without needing to read the entire file and write the entire file. So for that, we can use the uh, random access files. So I'm going in this example to do like something where we can save and load uh, a structure of uh, persons. So in my last video, I showed something with object output and input streams, and it's really easy to read and write entire objects uh, streams like this. But this won't enable us to actually do what I'm talking about. Like uh, if I want to add a person at some specific uh, place in a file, I can't really do that with this. Or if I want to change like an attribute of a person, let's say that I had three persons here and person number two says here name Peter. What if his name was Pete? Then I have to load the entire file, uh, change his name into Pete and then save the entire file afterwards. It's kind of like a long journey to do something very simple. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that, how we can also do go a bit deeper into files by creating our completely own file type that we can use uh, also in the future. And that is not dependent like the object output streams on names of attributes and stuff like that. So let's try to do some binary designing first. So we have this person that is uh, now it he implements serializable, but somehow we want to save his data into a file. And we have two things. We have an ID and we have a name. So the ID, the type of the ID is really easy because it's an integer and we already know um, how big an ID is because we know the maximum size of an integer. So when we want to save it, it's not like um, a text file like this. We want to save it in a binary file like this where we are actually saving it as raw data. So for example, the ID, we know that we can just save that with the byte size of the ID and we can actually get that just uh, simply by using the integer object. And then we have this one called bytes, which will give us the exact uh, byte size uh, for an integer. So this way we know exactly how many bytes an integer will be. And you know, a byte is like eight bits. So um, so that's, that's pretty, you see it's four bytes uh, wide, it says here, the integer. So we need to save four bytes of the, of the file that we're creating. We are saving that for an, an integer. So let me just open up paint for a second. So that means that we have something like we have the, the file here. Let's say this is the file. And inside of this file, we want to save something. So there's a lot of, bits available or bytes available here. So let's say that, uh, that the byte looks something like this. So this is actually eight bits in the file. So what we're going to do, we're going to allocate like the first, like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight bytes. So this is the zeroth byte, and this is the first and the second and the third, and this is the seventh byte that we have in our file. So for the first record in this file, for the first person, we're going to save his ID on the first four bytes. And now the next thing comes, this is going to be his name. So how many bytes is a string? That question is a lot harder to answer because we have no idea how many bytes this uh, guy's name is. So if we look back at creating the persons, we can see the first person has like 
four character five characters in it and the second one has two oh so four and Jane here has four and also if they had like weird characters they might even be longer than this so some characters in UTF-8 they have like um they have a m multiple bytes for representing them so we can't just say that that it's some length because we don't know that there's no upper limit for length of string so we cannot write something like string and then bytes we don't know how many bytes the string is going to be so how do we solve this so the easiest way to solve it is to just realize that we need to have a fixed size in order for this to work so we're going to design our binary file in a way where we already know how many bytes are available and in in utf-8 normally most of the characters especially in the english language will be available in the first eight bytes so because it follows the ascii character set so normally um, one byte is one character but not always so how many characters would be nice to have for a name we can define any number we know that this will be four uh bytes long oh i i'm sorry i actually put eight here that that was an error because the integer is only like four bytes long so let me just remove this again sorry so actually we have four bytes for this but how many bytes uh, do we want for the name so i'm going to say 50. So that means no matter how many characters we use, we only have 50 available. And that puts a cap on the amount of characters we can use. That would mean for most English uh, letters in a name, that would mean that it would be a maximum of 50 characters long. And maybe for some other names, it would be even less than that. But 50 is the maximum. And this is because when we are going to read this, we read the raw first four bytes we read them and put them into some kind of integer and we read the next 50 ones like this and we put them into a string and we just decide that we can decide whatever we want we could also decide that instead of doing this we could terminate a string so we could say like the first um uh four bytes will be the integer and then there will be a string until some weird character here like null or some weird special character at the end but then we can get into problems what if this character is used in the name for some reason maybe it's not the best what if it's not terminated correctly what happens then so in this example here we're going to design it so that we have four bytes for the integer for the ID and we know it's always four bytes long and then we have 50 bytes for the string this will waste some space but it will gain benefits uh, when we need to find something uh, we'll see that later so 50 50 bytes for the name will set a limit on the size of the name and it also means that all of the names will actually waste space the longer the names, the less space is actually wasted. So a very short name like this will be, this will certainly only be like five bytes. So we waste 45, we'll just have 45 empty spaces here, like empty bytes, zero bytes in all of this stuff here. So, yeah. So really it's not the most efficient in terms of how much space we're using. But that's not what we're going for we're going for speed here i'll show later how this gives us speed so 4 and 50 so let's try to define that first so let's try to define a class that will actually say because it's going to be a little a bit bigger than the other stuff i've been showing off so uh, so let's go new java class and we're going to call this like a uh, person uh file manager so this is our person file manager and for this we're going to define some static sizes so we're going to say uh, private static 
final int and we call it ID size. And we know that the ID is an integer, so we could use the integer bytes for actually counting, and that would be equal to four. So we could also write four here, like four. So we're actually saving the size of the integer into an integer. That's pretty, uh, yeah. Okay, so next one, private static void. Sorry, final old habit. And this this other one is going to be the name size. So we'll call this name size. And we know that the size of the name would be 50, because that is what we defined. We're defining 50 bytes here for the name. So we know that any, any uh, person would always be 54 bytes. Like 50 plus 4, 54 bytes. OK. And then we can also define, like we, we will call this a record. So I'll say final int record size is ID size plus name size. This is our record size. So we know any record in our system, 54 bytes. Okay. Then we want to be able to First off, let's try to add something to the file because now we have nothing. Um, I think before we do that, let's create a constructor with uh, with a file name. So I'm just going to say private uh, string file name. Yeah, and then we're going to say. Mm, Going to create a constructor, I'll insert constructor with the file name like that. So we need a file name in order for this to work at all. And then we're going to make a public method for saving, uh, for adding a person. Let's do that first because that, that will make it easy to get started. So we'll say public void add, and we could say add person. Maybe add person is bad. Let's say um, save person. So we're kind of saving it. Ah, let's do add. This is probably most common. So add a person, person P. And we have the person I defined that earlier in another video. We can see it has an ID and a name. These are the two things that we want to save. So when we're going to add a person, we're going to use the random access file for that. So we'll do, as I've shown before, a try catch block because then the random access file is auto closable. So we're going to say random access file uh, ref equals new random access file. And then of course we need the file name, which we have from the constructor. So we know that it's not null. And the other thing that we need is we need to define whether or not we should open it up for uh, only reading or writing. I'll just say RW will open it up for, for both of them. Yeah. And also, let's see, da, da. we need another one of these here. No. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't want a file name, it actually wants a file. So I think we're going to change instead of file name, I'm going to say we have a file. I forgot about that. And we have to put the file name here, then we're going to say new file. And we're going to put the file name here. Let's see if this is a if this is a good idea. And we need to add file from uh, Java IO. See here, file, random access file. So instead of file name, we put file here and we remove this. That's it. Of course, 
we need to put the catch block down here for the different kinds of exceptions that we can get. And let's see, we still need this here, like that. Uh, still have some problem. Okay, I don't know what happened. This is kind of outside of scope. Let me just, sorry about that. Let me just fix. So we can have a file not found exception or we can have an IO exception. These are the two kinds of uh, exceptions we can have. Yeah. Um, maybe we should do like this. Should be able to. Uh, oh, I can't remember right now. Let's just skip that. Okay, let's just keep focus on this. Uh, look at my other video for these exception types. Okay, so now I have my uh, new uh, random access file here. So the first thing we need to find out is uh, we need to find the end of the file. So for that, there's something built into the random access file, not ref, ref that where we can actually find, uh, go to the end of the file. So we'll use seek for that. And then it's, we have to get the length of the file. This way we will seek to the end of the file. And so go to end of file. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say ref and then we're going to use the right int, and then we put uh, p dot get id there. So that will write the integer to the person. And the next one, of course, uh, write string, not short. Write bytes. There's nothing to write like just uh, something like this. And um, what we could do here, we could say p dot get name, and that would be enough. Um, yeah, we can get into problems here. So the problem is we really need the uh, string to be of an exact size. So if we just get the name and put it in there, um, we don't write any uh, necessary uh, bytes. So let me show you here. So let's say that I'm writing Yepa here. So it will be, it will write like this, 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 and this. And then there will be nothing here. It won't, so let's say the file won't uh, actually have anything in here. So when I, next time, when I seek to the end, it will seek to the end of this, and it won't be 50, 50 bytes long. So because this is not 50 bytes long, I kind of have to uh, stuff in some extra bytes here, empty bytes, in order for it to end at some point and not just end the file here. So one way I can do that, of course, I could make a loop that would add, like look at the size of the name and then add them. But we can also use the string format for that. So the string format, it says like this, we have to do percentage and then we're going to make a minus and then whatever size so in this case we know it would be 50 bytes and then s that would actually format that to exactly 50 and then we would have to put the string that we want to format like this and we also um yeah so this is it so now we're formatting it to that. Um, so this is going to put some padding like I did here. It, it's going to put padding here, put some extra empty ones here. But um, now the next problem is I kind of added 50 to the end of it. So I also need to have only the first 50 bits of that. So you can imagine that the five, there would be five too many empty ones out here that we actually want to get rid of. So we're going to use substring for that. 
So this after this string format will give us a string that will be 50 plus the length of the file. So we'll just say substring. And then we will say we'll go from index number zero to uh, name size or 50. So that will take only the first uh, 50 characters and disregard this one. So we kind of making a bit too many and then removing them again. And of course, it shouldn't say 50 here. We should use the size so we can change it later. So, wow. Let me just try to fix this. Like this. So we take that and then the size of the name and S to format that to be uh, right padded to the name, right padding mean putting it to the right of the name. And then afterwards we take the substring from zero to the size of the name to make sure it's exactly 50 bytes long. So that's, that's pr pretty much it. That will write the bytes to the binary file uh, exactly as it should be. So maybe we should try this uh, out. So now we have we have like person file manager. We have the ability to add a person. So let's just go back into our main method and try to use that. So let's just remove what I've have of the old leftovers, and then try. Of course, in this case, we need to have because person file manager is not static. So person file manager equals or a new person file manager. And we need to have a file name, so I put the file name here. And in this case, we won't call it sir, we'll, we'll call it uh, like um, my binary, something like that. And it will be saved to the desktop. So this is it. So we have a new person file manager and then we'll say file manager, add person. And then I want, let's just take this person here because that was the example that I used. Uh, maybe I can put that person, no, let's just do it like this. Like this, and I will say P here, like that. And we'll try to run that for a second. Try to run. And it just says process finished. So let's see. Now we actually have a file here, so it looks pretty good. So let's just go into back into um, this one here and try to open this file up. I'll just open it up like the other ones, like this, just like a text file. And what we can see here is that it actually writes something like null, null, something. And we can see the characters here from, from Yeppe. And we can also see there is some padding here in the end for the last 45 characters. And then it says null, null, something here. So it's not very good to watch in here. Let, let's go try to um, go into this stuff here. Uh, so we have this hex editor here. Let's try to open up the file from, from desktop, the binary file that we just created. And uh, let's try to see if I can't zoom here for some reason, but yeah, let's keep it like this. So what we see is that we have the first four bytes, one, two, three, four bytes. You see, it looks like dots here. And if we look in here, it looks like like null, 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 and that's correct. And then it has something weird like SOH. So let's try to go back to our, here. If we look, what is SOH? You see start of heading. It's actually like one. It's the number one in decimal. And that's because the, the, the ID of, of this person was one. So we actually saved the number one in four bytes. So here we say like zero, zero, one is actually zero, 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 one. 
because it's it's four bytes. Let's look let's look at it again. So this is zero. This is the first byte. Next byte, third byte, fourth byte, right? Um, and the reason why it says zero zero and not four times zero is this is actually in hex value. So this is not byte value. I don't know. Maybe we can see the. No, it doesn't say over. But it's actually just four zeros. And this is uh, three zeros and a one. So. This is the representation of the integer. This is exactly four bytes long. And then comes the first 4a, which in in uh, integer is um, 74. So if we go in here and look at 74, let's go in, in this decimal, it says it's uh, capital J. So we know the next one should be E, like here. So the next one should be 101, let's go in and look. So we click here, it says 65, which is equal to 101. So it's actually just the uh, values, and we see here it says 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. And if you remember what 20 is, it's actually space. It's white space. Just when you press the space button on the keyboard, it will create like this 20. And this is uh, end of file. So it says 20, 20, 20, 20, and we could count them from here to here, and it would probably be um, these the correct. You see the file size is actually 54 bytes because we have one record in here. And if we had two, of course, would be double the size. So it actually works like that. Let's try to just write one more person. So I go into my main method and I change that person uh, yep, uh, I put the person number two here and run it again. And we can then look into the binary file and see there's all these spaces. And then it says STX and then Pete. We go back into our list and see it says STX. We see that comes after SOH, so start of text. That's number two. So that's because he has ID two. And we can go back in here and we can say open file. Let's just open up the same file. And we see it's exactly two times 54 bytes. So it's working pretty well. And we can see here starts the next person. We can actually also see it here. And we have 54 bytes from here to here and 54 bytes from here to here. So when we need to jump to the next person, we can jump 54 bytes each time. And this is what will actually help us a lot when we need to work with this. So so the, the only reason why I'm showing you this SOH and STX is just because when we watch it as a text file in here, it will say SOH, but it's really just Oh, the first four uh, bytes is actually um, just the number one, and this is just the number two. It's just because we're looking at it in a text editor. If we look at directly here in the hex editor, we'll see that it's actually just the number one, because these four bytes is the integer that we saved. Okay, let's go back to coding then. So now that we can add persons in here, this is pretty cool. So let's add the third person as well. P3. And we'll run that as well. And we could do the same thing. I won't do that again. I'll only look in here. See, now we have three persons in here. So that's pretty cool. This is how we add persons in our own binary format that we defined in our person file manager here. So let's try to do something where we read all of these persons. So let's let's define the interface first. I'll just say I want to define like public and I want a list of person and I'm going to call get all persons. And of course I need to Alt uh, Enter for uh, implement, uh, fetching the Java Util list. So now I want to get all the persons. So how do we do that? So we already have this framework of how to do it. It involves the random access file. We need to to kind of read it. 
So let's try again. So I'll just copy the code from, from here. Okay, put it in here. And we'll just keep it like this for now. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create the list that I'm trying to, to send back. So first off, let's just create the list. So uh, list person, persons equals new, and we'll use an array list for that. <coughs> Sorry. So the next thing we want to do, we don't we need to write anything. Let's just keep it here for, for now. So the next thing we want to do is we want to read all of the persons uh, in here. So now that we have the list, we're going to go through the entire uh, file. So we're going to say while, and then we're going to say random access file, get file pointer, which will point us when we start out because we just uh, we just started, it will be the first byte in the file. So if we look in here, it will be here. The pointer will be just here on the first, first byte of the file. The next thing we're going to do is while the pointer is less than the length of the actual random access file, we still want to keep reading. In other words, when the pointer gets outside of scope of the file, we are, we are outside of it. That means it, right now it's three times uh, 54 bytes. So, so when it gets outside of that, we want it to stop before it tries reading outside of the file because that will give us some serious problems. So the next thing we need to, to do is then we want to be able to fetch a department from from the random access file here. So that is a bit more complicated because now we need to go back like reading the bytes. So first thing that we want to do is we want to kind of uh, read the integer. So we want to read the ID. So Yeah, so you probably guessed it. I I, I kind of created all the persons here, but I'm not using them anywhere. So of course I need to add them to the array as well. Otherwise it doesn't work. Let's try again. That's better. So we can see it actually looks fine. Pete, Kepa, everyone is, is actually looks correct with the IDs and everything looks nice. So this was um, just the easiest thing. This was just um, reading everyone at, at once and adding persons pretty easy to the end of the list. But what if we want to change a person in the list? So now our list here is pretty small. We have three persons in here. But what if we had like a, a hundreds of persons or something like that? And we used one of the other methods I've shown. We read everything into memory. And then um, let's say it's uh, gigabytes in size. You sometimes come into a situation where you have gigabyte big files that you need to read. And you might not have the memory for that. Although you have a lot of memory today, it, it might be too too big to actually fit that in memory. So what we can do with the random access file is we can we can read through the file directly without loading everything into memory as we've done in the other examples. So let's say I want to change the name. Let's say that this middle person is actually called Peter. Then I have a problem. I want to change that. So. So what I want to do then is I'm going to make a new method. So I'm going to say file manager dot, um, and then we're going to do something like update. I don't know what we should call that. Maybe update person and 
then we're going to just put the uh, person like here so that it's going to be a new person and that person's ID would be number two and the new name would be Peter, something like that. So what we can do then is we can go in here and create that method and now we have our update person method. Of course we need to do the same. So what we're going to do, we're going to open the file for read and write like the others. So I'll copy this. And first off, so what we're going to do now, we're going to seek for uh, the person that we want to find. So first off, we don't want to seek to, to the end of the file. That we don't want. We want to start in the beginning of the file. And then we want to read the first um, int like that. Okay. And that will give us the first integer. And then we're going to say that if that integer ID is equal to the ID of the person that we're actually looking for, then we want to overwrite that. And we know it's only the name that we need to overwrite. So I'm going to say, and we know because we already moved the pointer, we can, we need to write the bytes like this. So we're going to say name size and substring, all of this stuff, instead of P, it's just going to be Peter. Maybe Peter is not the best. Let's use P instead because we don't know what the person's name is. So now we're going to write the bytes here that is also going to move the uh, pointer to the next location. And after writing that, we are just going to uh, return. That means the, it will jump out of all of this stuff. So if, um, if it's not the, we're not going to write the integer because the ID shouldn't change. So this is it. So we look for, we read the integer and then we check to see if it's the person we're looking for. If that's the person, we write the bytes uh, and then return. If we don't find the person, we don't, we, we won't change anything. So let's try this out. So I go back, we look in here, it's Pete. And I want to change that person into Peter. Maybe I should just get all and print it again. So we do this. Okay, so I have some error here. That's because I call it, okay. So maybe just move this into here and not use a list like that. Just because I had the same variable name as up here. Try again. Okay. So if we look at the file now, we can see it actually didn't change. So I must have done something wrong. So let's, let's try to look into that. So, okay. So maybe it didn't find it at all. So let's try to do some debugging. So now I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm putting a debugging here to see, does it go into this? And because there's only three of them, I think I'll, I'm just going to put it here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I think, of course, what I, I'm missing is, I, I know already, it's because I forgot to put this in a loop, of course, it will only do this once. And because it's not the first person, it will just stop here and never go beyond this point. So I need to have the while loop from up here, like the length. So I'll put that here. So I'm going to say while the file so. Let's just say reformat. So now I'm going to say while the file pointer is not at the end, keep going. So let's try again. 
And I got a problem here. So I get an end of file exception. That means that I'm running um, longer than the end of file. So let's see what's going on. So taking a look at this, I can see what the problem is. So the next problem, so now I'm actually iterating. So I only actually move forward if I actually find what I'm looking for. But for the first one, the first person in here, this person, Jeppe, um, I'm not skipping, I'm not skipping the 50 bytes. You see, I, I do read here. So I could say raf dot, um, and then I could raf, let's see. So what I need to do is I need to kind of uh, skip, um, skip bytes and then I'm going to say name size. So I skip the, these bytes so that the file pointer will go to the next end. So let's see if that works. So we see now what it does, it actually reads the first one and it sees that it's not the correct one. And then I skip the name and then I read the next one, sees it's correct one and writes that. And then it um, goes to uh, the last person. Hmm. I think I should probably uh, have an else here because Otherwise, it won't work with uh, with the last person. So, because it will actually skip if I already written the bytes, I don't need to skip the bytes. So let's try it again with this. It should still work. So I'll go back to Pete. Let's see, Peter to Pete, and yes. So that will work better. Otherwise, it will only work. Yeah, it will work though because. It will work anyway, now I remember. So it will work with with or without the else because it will actually just return here and not go any further once it's found the person we're looking for. So that is actually updating a person. And that is uh, a pretty complex thing to do, probably one of the most complex things to do. So what we need then, now we can actually, we can get all the persons, we can add a person so what we often want for something like this is CRUD. We want to create a person that is adding it. We did that. We want to be able to read a person. We can't do that yet because um, we want to read, for example, a person with a specific ID. So we can't do that. We want to update. We have that and we want to delete. So we're going to, the last two I'm going to show you is uh, read and delete. So I'm going to say pop, I say public and I type private, public uh, void um, delete person. And I'm going to say, which person are you going to delete? And maybe something like this. And we could also just delete it by ID instead, maybe. But um, yeah, I'll just say delete person. And I want another method, public, void, and that one should be the get person. And then we want the ID of that person in order to fetch that person. So let's try to look at first how to get the person. So we could do something like when we wanted to um, get all the persons. No, sorry, uh, when we wanted to add a person. So I'll copy that code. So what I'm going to say is that we're going to, no, not add a person, sorry. Um, the update person, that's what I meant. So I copy the code from that because I can reuse that for getting a person because we're really doing the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while we are inside of this and we say we read the ID and we check if the ID is equal to the ID. Now we have a naming problem here. 
So we're not going to call this ID, we're going to call that um, current ID. So that we're checking if the current ID is equal to the ID that we're looking for, then we don't want to write it, we actually want to return the person that we're looking at. So this shouldn't be void, of course, this should be person. And if it's not the person we're looking for, let's uh, skip the bytes. So I'm going to say return and then new person. And we put the ID here, or we can use the current ID, doesn't matter. And then we get, uh, we also need to read the name of that person. And for that, we need to use this, um, like we did when we read all of the persons. So we need to kind of use all of this stuff to do that. So maybe I should, instead of copying all of that stuff, maybe I should just make a method for reading one person. So let's do that. So I'll do private uh, person read person from ref. It should maybe be because it's random access file. So um, we have to put the random access file as a parameter here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say um, like this. Put that down here. Turn P. And we want the bytes here, like this. Mm, let's see, have we forgotten anything? Oh yeah, so this, this will give us some um, IO exception. So we have to handle that. Uh, the best way is just to, uh, add it to the method signature. So someone else, because it's an internal one, so we can catch it up here. So that is it. So it reads the bytes and it trims it and it also needs the ID. So let's see. Hmm. Let me think for a second. Yeah, of course we want the ID as well. So let's do that. And so now it reads the integer and everything, uses ID and name and returns that. So we say uh, read one read person, and then we send the random access file as a parameter here. So that, that makes that a bit simpler, I think. Let's see, can we use the same one down here? Mm. No, because we are reading the ID here. Yeah, let's skip on the optimizations for now. So what we really need is this uh, part here. So I'll just take that and put it in here. So we read the bytes from the random access file after reading the ID, put it into a person and return that person P. So I thought I could reuse that, but because I read the, I have to read the ID first, I would have to go back and forth. And so this is, this is fine. So we could probably optimize that somehow, but not right now. So what we're going to do now, get person, I get the random access file, I get the file pointer each time to check if it's above the length. I read the integer, I check if it's the same. If it's the same, I create the person in memory and return that to whoever is fetching that. So let's test out the method. So now I should be able to get like, let's try to get Jane. So I'm not going to update the person now. So instead of using get all persons, I'm going to say get person and I'm going to fetch Jane. 
So let's see if that works. So it should print the list and then print Jane. Okay. So I have some error in this method. Let's see. So this should return a person. So what if I don't find the person? I think I'm going to return null. That would probably be the best thing to do. And we actually see we found person number three, Jane here, just fine. And we can test just to make sure it wasn't just lucky or something. We can test the first person. Should be able to find that person as well. And the second person. Like that. So it actually works fine. So now we almost finished the person manager. We have the update person, we have add person, we have get person, we have read person, uh, which is private, of course, just part of that, get all persons and a constructor and everything. So the last thing we need to actually be able to delete a person. And this is something where we need to, to make a choice. Because if we look inside the file, let's go here, we can see that right now we have a nice file like this. So what happens if I want to delete a person? So if I want to delete Jane, it's really easy. I can just delete it. It will still be a nice file. But what if I want to delete Pete or Yeppe? What if I delete Yeppe, for example? What should I do then? Should I overwrite this with just empty data? Should I, what should I do? Because I somehow need to uh, reclaim that space, but let's say I have a very big file, like 10 million uh, fields in here or something like that. And I remove the first element. Should I then copy everything else, move that one place each time that I remove something? And now we are into something that you've probably seen with hard drives and, and file systems. That is a problem. What if you, when you delete a file from, from, the, from the hard drive, you leave a hole there. So they decided to, if, if for example, I remove Pete, it would simply just leave like blanks here all over the place. So how, how can we actually do that? Do we really run, want to do that? Do we just want to delete like, uh, so if we want to delete a single person, um, what do we do with that? So that is kind of up to you what to do. So there are, the, there are these several options. So one option was just to uh, read everything and remove that person and then write a new file with all the new persons. So, so we, oh, this is the, so, we have get all persons, we don't have save all persons. So I don't, I don't know what, what you should do. For example, we could um, override it and like make a minus one as uh, the ID or we could do anything like that. I don't know what to do with which one is the best one. Um, so it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Also, some of these might give problems. So. Because of the way that I'm trying to to read these uh, uh, update a person, for example, I need to be able to read the integer. So uh, maybe I should set like an ID that's not valid to something like minus minus one. So let's try to do that. So I'm going to say private static final int invalid ID. We could also call it empty ID. And we could simply just set that to minus one so that we know when someone has the ID of minus one, it's because they have been deleted from the system. Okay, so what we can do now is we can, uh, before what we did is when we wanted to update a person, let's go to update person. Update, 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 where are you? Here it is. So we would, um, 
we read that integer and then we uh, do like this. So, so we kind of have to do the same thing, except we actually want to override uh, both the ID and we want to override the, the um, name of the person with nothing. So what we do in file system oftentimes, you know, if you delete a file from your hard drive, the file system will just mark that file as not being there. So you could do the same thing in your file. For example, if you wanted to delete Yeppe from this file, the first guy here, you could change this into minus one. And that would mean that he doesn't really exist. So this way you don't need to override his data. You just override his ID and he's gone. And the reason why they do that on hard drives is because it would be quite stupid if they had to overwrite uh, like several megabytes or gigabytes of data on the hard drive with nothing when you can just mark the file as not being there. This is also the reason why it's very easy to find files after you deleted them from from your hard, hard drive. So we kind of have to do something. And, and what I'm choosing to do is just setting the ID to minus one. So how, how, how can we actually set the ID to minus one. First off, we need to find what we're looking for. So I'm kind of just copying, sorry, kind of just copying from update person for now to see what we can do with that. So we're looking in this random access file, we're checking it, and we are reading the integer here. So now we actually, we know that this is the guy we're looking for. So we don't want to write the bytes of the uh, of the person. So what to do? So we don't want to. So let's say. So we don't want to write the person like this. This doesn't matter. So we kind of have to do something here. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to kind of. Uh, backtrack a bit. So we can say ref and then we can say like seek and that will seek to a specific byte position. But um, how do we know where we are? We can say ref dot get file pointer and that will seek to the exact same spot as we are. But if I say minus ID size, it should actually seek back the size of the ID. And then we can actually, uh, we have already read the ID, so we know about that. So now we're just going to overwrite that ID with uh, minus one because that was our kind of like our invalid ID. So we're going to say raft.write int, and then I'm going to say it wasn't invalid ID, it was empty ID. So that's it. So I remove that one. And after I've done that, I can return. I go out here, it auto closes and everything. Other than that, otherwise I don't seek back or anything like here. So I read the integer, like I go here, I read the integer, I skip the text to this side and I go to the next one, skip the integer. If I find it, I go back, override it, skip and, and then return. Oh, I don't skip, but I just return. So let's see if that actually works. So let's just disable uh, a person. So right now, when we are reading all of the persons, I'm still reading it, although it's minus one. So let's, let's see, we still need that, but let's just try it out now. So what are we doing now? Let's see, we are just getting person number two, yeah? So, what I want to do now is I want to delete a person. So I'm going to say file manager dot delete person. And then I'm going to delete person number two, which I can't do. I actually need the person. So let's just put her up here or, or he, him up here. Let's take Peter here. And then I'm going to say delete person uh, P2 like that. So that's it. So let's see if that works. And also um, we'll need to print out the persons again. So I think I'm going to make it a bit simpler. 
So I can just reuse that. So after I deleted it, I printed it out again. Let's see what goes on. So what we can see now is that the ID of Pete went from two to minus one, but he's still on the list. So of course now we need to interpret that if something has been deleted, this means that it has been deleted. We don't want him in the list anymore. So we go into a person file manager and under get all persons, uh, we say read person from RAF. So let's go here. I'm going to say person P equals, wow, sorry, sorry. I'll just go back here. I made some error. Person P equals that person. And then we add that. So we didn't change anything. But we are only going to say that if P is not equal to minus one. Sorry. Is small. Wow. What am I doing? Not really minus one. If P is not equal to P dot, sorry, get ID is not equal to the empty ID, then we're going to add that person to, to the list of persons that we want to see. And we pretty much have should do this everywhere. Also, when we add a person, we have to check that it's not like in this method here, add person, then we can say if uh, p get id is equal to empty id throw new exception not allowed or something like that as id yeah of course Let's do like that. Okay, let's try to run that for a second. And now we see it doesn't print that person anymore because it's, uh, it's he's been deleted. We can go into the data and see that, uh, ah, doesn't matter. We can see that uh, now this is a minus one. So there's something wrong here. It looks uh, different, right? So he's been deleted from, from that. Yeah. So, and we, um, this way we can delete something without destroying our, our file. Uh, it will, so we could also do other cool stuff. Like let, let's say we want to add a person then. So let's say we're going to person P3, new person, number three, and this is going to be like, um, so like Donald, and we're going to add that person. So let's say we want to add Donald here now. Is there a problem? What's the problem? Just a second say okay so the add person method i didn't oh yeah it's because i throw the exception so maybe we'll just put a try catch around it and print it if it if it's a problem so now we're going to add the person uh, p3 so what would be really cool now is because basically we know Pete is has been sorry, we know Pete has been deleted, so we would actually just want to override Pete in the file. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to look uh, if it's minus one, and if it's minus one, we're just going to override it. So we're going to go into our file manager, and we're going into our add person. 
and sorry, not yeah, add person. And we want to check, or we could check. Um, I think this video is probably getting too long, but what we could do here, I'm just going to explain the basics of it, is that instead of just seeking to the end of the file, we could try to first find some spot inside of this file, for example, the spot here where it's minus one. And when we find out the ID is minus one, we overwrite that entire record. We overwrite that with uh, our our new one because we know they're always the same size, so we can easily do that. So that's basically, so it's kind of a combination of the update person and the add person. So yeah, that's basically it. Okay, I think that's it for this video. It's getting too long, so I'm going to stop here. So the last video in the series for now is going to be a video on this um, exception handling and how you can do it somewhat gracefully so that you don't get into problems and how can you give nice messages to the user when you are in Java, you're very much forced, forced to do all of this exception handling. So let's look into that in the next video.